Hello everybody, it is July 29th, Sunday, and it's about 5 o'clock in the afternoon, so I'm losing daylight, so I gotta get in here quick. So today I am going to be moving the bees in this little hive here into a brand new hive I got from Bee Built. Super excited to get the bees into this. This is a beautiful Douglas fir medium frame hive with a nice little pitched roof. And I really need to move these in there because this is sort of a makeshift system. I don't even have a bottom board. I just have a piece of plywood I stuck on there. I don't have, I have some foam there. I don't even have a top cover. I just have some insulation there with a plastic lid and a brick. So it really is just a makeshift situation. This box actually contains a feeder. It's empty. So in other news of this hive, this hive was created from queen cells that I took from my mother hive over there. And it was a frame that had three swarm cells on the bottom. I stuck them in there with a couple frames of bees to create another hive, another split. And I got a queen and she was mated, but she has not been laying well. Very poor laying pattern. I tried boosting her with a frame of bees from one of my other hives, so I gave her a frame of brood to kind of boost things and to increase the population of bees, but she hasn't really done very well. So as Michael Palmer says, I'm not going to save the dinks and I'm going to find the queen if I can um, today. If not, I'm going to find her tomorrow and I'm going to replace her. So I'm going to get a queen for my mentor Li Ying and replace her and hopefully get this hive really going. This hive has not really grown much. It started with just a couple frames of bees and it hasn't grown much. It's still about five frames as opposed to this hive, which was started about the same time, has both of these hive bodies, number one, number two, totally drawn out and just, it's booming. And it was probably started maybe two weeks before this one. So this queen has been doing great. This is uh, hive body number three. They're starting to draw that out. And, and in the fourth one, I just have a feeder because we are in the middle of dearth right now. So I want to encourage them to draw out as much comb as possible. So I'm giving them syrup until the fall, fall flow starts. Today's agenda is to get the bees into their new hive. And also I am going to do a mite wash. Since I'm gonna be getting into this hive, I'm gonna go ahead and do an alcohol wash. I'm gonna do the other two hives tomorrow because like I said, I'm losing daylight. So while I'm in there, I might as well get a sample. So a uh, mite wash is basically, I'm gonna take a little jar of alcohol. I'm gonna take a half cup of nurse bees, younger bees, and I'm gonna sacrifice them. It's important to do this because we must monitor varroa mites because coming into the fall, their numbers spike, bee populations reduce, and that's when it becomes really detrimental to your hive because the mites that are there will continue to grow and infest your hive going into winter. And that's a big reason why people lose their bees in the winter because the bees are infected with the varroa which reduces their immune system and they're very susceptible to viruses and it just makes them less hardy to survive the cold winter. So we're going to check today and best practice is to check every couple of weeks. Um, numbers also increase around this time of year because bees are also robbing. So that means they're going to other hives and taking honey or nectar from other hives because there's not a lot of flowers blooming right now. And so that's another way they get infected with Varroa. All right, let's get in there. Before I get in there, let me tell you about this little thing. I built this little hive stand right here out of some four by four scraps and some two by fours. And it's probably about, I don't know, 14 inches off the ground. Uh, originally this was actually on the ground, which was not the best kind of situation, but I knew I was gonna swap them out into a new hive, but let me tell you the components of this hive. So this is a screened bottom board, and the reason why it's screened is that mites that might be on the bees will fall, and this board comes out, and you spray this with a little bit of cooking oil, and that way the varroas stick, and you can kind of get an idea a little bit of the rate of kind of infection. You can also see the bees will also chew at the wax when they're consuming honey. So in the wintertime, you can monitor their activity or see where the cluster is based on where the wax crumbs will be. So that's kind of a neat thing. I've had solid bottom boards in all of my hives. So this is a kind of a luxury. So that will go in the bottom. And then this hive body will go on top. Now a hive body is just a box, whether it's a super or a 
brood box depends on what's in there. So all hive bodies are boxes, and this is going to be a brood chamber, which is where the brood or baby bees develop and grow and where the queen lays. And then when you add more boxes on top, like over there, and when the bees start storing honey, like on the top there, and those are called the supers. So I'm gonna be transferring the frames from in there into here. This is a beautiful hive body box, really nice joinery, and the screws are really nice too. So really beautiful detailing and nice screws. Very easy to assemble. I assembled this myself, very simple, as the roof is very beautiful as well. This is pretty easy to assemble as well. Bee Built, because I said I was interested, also sent me some tongue oil. So I treated this top cover and the hive body and the bottom board. Two coats of tongue oil, which I brushed on pretty liberally and let that soak for a couple days. They say at least 24 hours before adding another coat. This is an untreated pine hive body and those are treated. So you can see that they have a bit of a darker color and it does have a scent. So best case scenario is to treat with the tongue oil. Basically what the tongue oil does is it acts as a water repellent because water causes mold and damage to your hive bodies. Oftentimes people paint them, but I really love the natural finish. What I did was I actually went ahead and painted the tongue oil onto the hives while the bees were in there. I did that in the evening and I've done that twice now. And the bees did not abscond, thankfully, but best practice is to do the hive bodies with the tongue oil when the bees are not in the boxes. So don't do what I did. Apparently you have to oil them every year to keep that water repellent nature. You must use 100% tongue oil. Do not buy the stuff from the big box stores because those contain other solvents which are harmful to the bees. Alrighty, so let's get in there. This is just an empty hive body. This is a feeder I've been using. I like this system. There's very little drowning and you can actually feed the bees without exposing yourself to any of the bees. So that's great during dearth. They oftentimes can be a bit cranky and this way you're not even exposed to the bees at all. So, so far I've really liked these feeders. Pretty small population of bees. It hasn't grown too much in the time it's been here. So what I'm gonna do is just transfer the bees into the other hive body here. And then I'm also gonna get a sample of bees for my mite check. So we wanna keep the order of the frames the same. So when we wanna get nurse bees, nurse bees are the bees that tend to the brood. So they will be on, they will be on the brood frames. Oh, looks like they're working on a supersedure right now. I was going to requeen this hive, but it looks like this hive is already in the midst of superseding the old queen. And there's one right there, and it looks like it's about to open. See that right there? And there's one right there. So because they're on the face of the frame, that tells me, look, this one's about to hatch. That there was an emergency. Something must have just happened. It's not on the bottom, which would be a swarm cell. I'm not even going to replace the queen here, so I'm just going to let them do their thing. There's actually an open cell right there. So I haven't been in this hive in about a week. I miss these. Probably a virgin queen. She's out and about. We're in the hive somewhere. Oh, look here. There's another supersedure cell right there. You know it's a super, super procedure because it's on the side. See that? There's another one built out. It's actually a beautiful one. So you guys didn't see what I did at all there. So what I just did was I knocked that frame of bees in there. What I did was I took a scoop of bees like this and measured a half a cup. And then I dumped them into a jar with alcohol. Now these bees are dead and they'll be sacrificed. I'm gonna switch these around and any mites that are there will fall to the bottom. I'll use a strainer and strain them out and see how many mites I have. I'll do another dump and shake and my mite wash in another video so you can see that better. All right, so let's get these bees back 
on their hive stand. Put the bees in the top. Feet are back on. All right, well, I'm gonna have to There's the beautiful new hive. Poor bees are all grouchy and discombobulated, but they are in their new home. And what did I learn today? Well, I learned that the bees also knew that this queen was not a good one, and they were in the midst of replacing her. The last time I was in here, I did see some swarm cups in the bottom, but I did not see the supersedure cells, which is not uncommon because oftentimes the bees cover up the supersedure cells because they're on this side. So I saw one that was open, and that indicates that there is at least one virgin queen around, and there are a couple others. The bees often do that as backup. I'm actually going to add an entrance reducer, probably a couple sticks, to reduce the entrance because this hive is pretty weak. Cut back in a week or so and see if there are signs of new brood or eggs. That means I have a mated new queen. All right, see you next time. Thanks, bye. Okay, so here's my sample of a half a cup of bees. I'm gonna shake the alcohol off the bees. Three. So you can see those three dots. Those are varroa mites. That is right on the threshold of treatment. This is a nuke, so there's only about three or four frames of bees. So they're going to be very susceptible to treatment, particularly because they are in the midst of requeening. Oftentimes if you use formic acid and some other forms, even oxalic acid, to treat for mites, they can stop the queen from laying or just affect her, yes, laying ability or they can actually kill her. I'm going to re-rinse these and see if I can get any more mites to come off. Swish them again. Really give them a shake. The bees are dead after all. So the mites often live in the little creases in the abdomen of the bees. So they really attach themselves to the bees. So it's good to give them a good shake. Ha, two more. After doing one final shake of the jar, I found two more. So seven total. Definitely need to do some sort of treatment. I will be back to let you know what I do.